Hi, I'm Shania Rafat and I'm playing Lucy Manet in A Tale of Two Cities. And the piece I'm reading is A Peaceful Protest by Connor Ray. Before closing my eyes and moving towards the vision of the Buddha, I respectfully plead to President Imgyo Dindiem to take a mind of compassion towards the people of the nation and implement religious equality to maintain the strength of the homeland eternally. I call the venerables, reverends, members of the Sangh and the lay Buddhists to organize in solidarity to make sacrifices to protect Buddhism. Dich Quang Du carefully folded and sealed the single paragraph which formed the last letter he would send. As he placed it upon his desk, a sense of finality gripped him as he prepared for the day ahead. Age 65, Duke had no disputes with dying. He was content with how his life had panned out, and as he relocated to the kitchen for his last meal, he smiled silently to himself. There was no grandeur about the day in Duke's mind. His humble plate of bread and cheese echoed these thoughts. He was still eating when there was a quiet knock at the door. The countdown had started. Duke had mere hours until oblivion. Today was a day of protest. Today Duke would end his life in the hope of ending the struggle against the DM government. The two visitors were invited inside and they prayed together before leaving in silence. Upon reaching Duke's car, an old Austin Westminster, the visitors, friends of Duke's, checked that everything was packed and ready before sitting in the back. Duke didn't get straight into the car. Instead, he walked the short distance to the end of his garden and looked out over the valley. The view was the reason he'd chosen the house. He tried to capture the image in his mind as a single tear meandered its way down his wrinkled cheek. He returned to the car and turned the key. The engine rattled, as it always did. Familiar grey smoke issued from the exhaust. The journey was made in silence, slowly, towards the Cambodian embassy in Saigon. At one juncture, he stopped to allow two small children to cross the road. They were brother and sister, and as Duke contemplated their life and how much they had ahead, he again, he again began to cry. Still, no words were spoken. As the procession reached its destination, Duke bro brought the car to a stop. There were a handful of reporters present, that would suffice. Duke got out of the car and walked calmly to the middle of the road where his friends had placed a cushion. Sitting in the lotus position, he removed his old wooden prayer beads from his pocket. Rolling these around his palm, Duke closed his eyes. Picturing the view from his garden, he cleared his mind of how cold the petrol was and of the pain he was about to experience. Duke raised the solitary match he'd brought. With a tear wetting a line down his cheek and words he had chosen years before, Nam Moa Dida Fat, I place my faith in Amida Buddha. He struck the match. <laughs>